In this video, I want to make a garden cart, and the garden cart has to be big enough to carry pallets because I often get deliveries down at the edge of the driveway. A garden cart with a ramp that can carry a full pallet. Now, the likelihood that I'm going to have to carry a pallet often is low, but I want to have the availability when I do need to drag a pallet up onto the cart. I could bring it down here. This is your average pallet. It's 48 by 42. I want my cart to be big enough to carry this with just a little bit of room around it. Here you see me working on my five by 10 foot, 5,000 pound strong hand fabrication table. It is such a pleasure to work on this table. On the grid on the table, I've laid out the actual shape of my beginning frame. Now that I cut all my pieces square to length, I want to put a bevel on them. And I'll show you a little trick that I made for the saw so that you can go quick from 90 to 45 without too many wrenches involved. I designed these pieces of wood to do a quick 45 change. When you have a frame with bevels, it's seemingly easy, but it's actually difficult to get all of them to fit. One shift, it shifts this way, it sh throws that one off, throws that one off, so everything has to be shifted in the right. And so it begins. I decided to TIG weld because I always take the opportunity to practice whenever I can. In this case, I have a lot of nice clean joints that I could just get at. When it starts getting into the side welding and the upright, then I go to the more convenient MP215 MIG welder. I'm doing all these TIG welds with the Precision 225. The Precision 225 is a powerhouse. I bought it before I was on YouTube, and conveniently enough, I ended up working with Lincoln Electric. It's a really very powerful machine for aluminum and steel, if you're thinking about it. In this video, you see me using the Nova Eclipse horizontal bandsaw. You can get it at KBC Tools and Machinery. This is an incredible machine. It comes with several presets for all different types of material. The presets set the speed for the type of material you're cutting, whether it's stainless, carbon steel, non-ferrous. Now that I've established the perimeter of the deck, I'm adding more strength to it by adding more ribbing. I'm using the MP215 welding all the fillets and all the top welds and the side welds makes moving through a project like this a breeze. The main frame of the deck is done. I need to make a second deck that's going to be the ramp that flips down. So I'm going to make a very similar second one, same deck that flips up. In the first part I was using material that I already had but I ran out so I had to come back up to Albany Steel. They have this convenient cash and carry room. All the lengths are six feet long, but you have a variety of profiles and wall thicknesses. Okay, what I've done now is I've cut the frame that's gonna be the frame that flips out. And just to make sure everything is the same size, I lay it out directly on top of the established frame. So whether this bottom frame is square or not, this one's going to live on top of it, so it's going to be the same shape. And it is square. For extra strength, I make sure I weld every aspect of every seam, top, bottom, sides, even the little open edges. I try not to leave any open welds because I don't want water to get inside and rust. I do the best that I possibly can. And having this table is a dream. This is expanded metal wire mesh. I got this on Facebook Marketplace for $25 a sheet. The guy had two sheets 
I'm going to cut this with the angle grinder and this is going to become the deck of the ramp, the deck of the underside of the ramp and the deck of the actual working surface. This expanded metal isn't probably the best choice for this deck, but it's what I have and I can change it out later or put planks on it to increase the strength. But it's important to weld every single open edge so it doesn't become a problem later. These are going to become the hinge plates on the plasma cutting software. I mean, TorchMate CAD CAM version 9. In here, you bring a vectorized image, maybe a, something from Illustrator or a PDF. And in here, you could design. Let's see, we could show you a preview. So we're going to output this onto the hard drive. It goes on this, and then we take it to the machine. So the graphic is loaded onto the computer. The machine is set up and ready to go. We have quarter inch plate right here and we're going to give it a shot. We'll see it fits right in this area. There's no water in the table because my hose is frozen because it's cold out. We'll give it a shot right here. See what happens. This is a guard that I use to protect the Mercedes Benz. I'll clean them up and we'll get them in place. After sanding the pieces a little bit, I bring them out to the machine shop just so I can bore a perfectly clean half inch hole. Plasma cuts, when you make small holes, never come out really good. You're going to need to always bore them out a little bit. Okay, these are the tires I got from Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight doesn't sell the hubs. I had to buy the hubs on Amazon. And this is the axle. I'm going to pack them with grease, put them together right now. Whoa. Now there's going to be some mechanic nerd in the in the comments that says this is the wrong grease because of the color. You know what? I don't give a Go check out KBC for tools like this and much, much more for your machine shop. Incredible stuff. Thank you, KBC. I cut my axle, and this is a 2 inch by 2 inch with a 3 16 wall. So it's a fairly thick wall. And I needed spacers, so I welded on these 1 8 inch spacers onto the solid steel shaft. This is going to go in there. We're going to bang that in, and we're going to weld it.
Now I'm cutting the thick walled two inch. The part I need is actually on the opposite side of the bandsaw blade. What I'm holding is the scrap. These are going to become the big arrow shape which points to the ball hitch on the actual Polaris. I need to cut this severe angle. This is going to be where the tongue is. So I need to cut this severe angle twice. This saw will not adjust to that angle. So I just welded on this piece of half by two and be able to get that cut just like that. It's going to be a little jumpy because this isn't really supported out here, but I'll hold it while we cut it. Almost all the way through it broke off so I could get the rest of that with the angle grinder. Okay, I'm here in the dark. This is that severe cut I just made on both of those two inch tubes. And I have this long tube is going to become part of the ratchet mount. That's why I'm leaving it long. And if you see here, I have a laser going right down the middle of the trailer. So I know that my tongue is going to be tangent to the wheels and everything else. Everything looks pretty good. This gets bolted here. This is from Tractor Supply. Ah, it's pretty good. Not bad. So to mount this ratchet, I needed to weld that bolt in place. Then I could drop this down on there and get that bolted in place once it's up on the cart. But this piece of steel right here is gonna get welded onto the bracket that's gonna hold this up in the air. And I'll be able to drag things onto the cart with this if they're too heavy for me to move by myself. Just assessing my work, I went to crank up the, the leg there and the arm was too long. It interfered with that one inch tube I just welded in place. So I cut out about four inches of it, which makes it easier to use, honestly, because nothing too heavy is going to be used on this trailer. That has like a 2,000 pound capacity. This little short handle makes it easy. So I found this steel 2x4 and I'm cutting it. These are going to become the stake pockets that are going to be welded to the outside of the entire cart on three sides. And I started to think of a clever way to put them on because they need to stand out a little bit so that the, the wood and the bolts can clear the flipping ramp. So I used these 2 inch angle irons and I also did support it from underneath a little bit later in the video. You'll see that. Now I'm making the wooden sides. They're going to the containment sides in case I wanted to put bushels of nonsense in there just using some hemlock and then a couple chunks of oak this is all just what I had lying around 
this is all just the potential laying around the side of the shop and it's really refreshing when you get a chance to use it now I don't want these pieces of wood to fall all the way through those stake pockets so I'm putting a little shoulder on them you'll see how I'm using the table saw to get the shoulder 90% dialed in and then that one little piece I use the bandsaw all my stakes fit pretty good they're a little loose I'll shim them later on for now I want to get the wood in place I'm just using crown staples to hold it in place while I take a look at everything once I decide I like the way it looks I'll use some 3 8 inch by 3 inch carriage bolts and you notice how I use the top as my beginning piece and then I use the spacer and I pull the bottom piece up to it that way I get a nice consistent look all around I like to show these awkward moments just so you could see what I go through. Here I am trying to get this off the table without dropping and severely banging it like I just did there. Didn't leave any marks. You see me look to see if I damaged the edge of the table. And I didn't. And there it is. Ta-da! Finally getting a chance to see it in person on the floor in scale. And the ramp is actually pretty good. I was afraid it was going to be too short and that angle would be too severe. But even if that's the case in a certain circumstance, I could just put some planks on it. I'm very happy with the results till now. Really like the way this look and the scale is really going to be perfect. And it fits. It's an exciting moment when I can test drive a project like this. All in, materials, hardware, and everything, this project cost me about $600, which is a little bit pricier than something you can get on Northern. But I have the satisfaction of saying I made it myself. I'm that much smarter, and I have a little bit of innovation here with this pull-up ratchet strap that I'm running right now for the very first time. If you stuck it out this long, I really appreciate it. You can find me on Patreon for some more exclusive content. Thank you for the love and support always. And a very big thank you to Lincoln Electric for supporting me here on YouTube for more than nine years. Thank you very much, Lincoln.